Okay, so this is our fourth lecture. We're going to talk about infinite dimensional vector spaces. So our results for linear dependence, we we, uh, we notice that it does not require V to be finite dimensional, right? And we see that finite dimensional emits a basis, and any two bases has same cardinality. What, what about infinite dimensional vector spaces, right? If it's infinite dimensional, do does it have a basis? Does it always have a basis? And it requires a new axiom, and it's independent of the ZFC axiom, which is called a Zorn's lemma. So to develop our theory, we have to first start on, um, we have to define what is the, to, to get you guys to understand what is Zorn's lemma saying, okay? So a relation on a set is a subset of the Cartesian product of x and x itself. So if x, y is in R, then we read x, r, y. So we can replace R with the, with the symbol less than equal to, and there's a partial order on F if we have, oops, why is this, okay. Okay, if first is reflexive, so we have this, and it's transitive, so if x is less than y, y is less than z, and x is less than z. And it's anti-symmetry. So if we have x less than y and y less than z, then it implies that x is the same as y. And this is then a partially ordered set. And we sometimes we just write it as post set. P for partial, O for order. So partially ordered set. Okay. Now a chain is that for so a chain or is is that for any two elements you can compare them okay so this or this is true so so this thing is true which means that you, you can compare them so every elements in c are comparable or we call it a totally ordered set or a linearly ordered set okay so we have a relation and a relation we're interested in is a is a, is a order relation and the chain is a totally ordered which means that you have a partial order set it's a subset of a partial order set such that for any two elements you can compare them. Now example, so R with the less than or equal to numerically is a totally order with the usual order. And so does the uh, rational set. Now we let X to the non-empty set, we consider it its power sub power set. So this is the set of all subsets. Okay? Now for A B being subset, we define A less than or equal to B when A is a subset of B. Then we say Px is ordered by inclusion, okay, and it's a post set. So it, 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 you can easily verify it as a post set. Now, if x has more than more than one element, then it is not a chain. Why? Because if you consider just two elements, these two are not subsets of each other. You can't com compare them, right? So it is not a totally ordered set. Now, if it's not empty, so everything the same, we define A less than B when A contains B. So this order by containment is again a post set. And if it's more one element, it's not a chain because you can't compare two disjoint sets. And examples for F and G be a continuous function from 0 to 1 maps to R. And we define S le F less than or equal to G when Fx less than or equal to Gx for all X. So on a domain. Then it is again a post set. Okay? Now, let n greater than 1 v be a finite dimensional vector space, and we let x be the set of, of subspaces of v, okay? And this is a partially ordered by inclusion, okay? So it's a post set. Now, we pick, an L, uh, pick a basis for v, because v we assume is finite dimensional. We pick a basis, and we define wk as a span from v1 to vk okay so this is span this is w1 and this generates w2 blah 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 and this generates wn but wn is just equal to v okay and c the set c which is 0 w1 to wn is a chain in x right this obviously it can be checked easily that it is a chain but something that's not really easy to check is that it's not contained in another bigger chain. So if you have another chain that contains C, then you should be equal to C. So here's the proof. 
So we let D be a chain such that it contains C. And C is the proper subset of D. Okay, so it contains one extra element, at least one extra element. Then we pick an element in D but not in C. First, because W is a subspace, right? Then your dimension should be less than the dimension of V. So W is less than or equal to WN is equal to V because if you're subspace, then you're contained in the given space V, which is WN. So since our order is inclusion, then we have this. And we know that W is not this trivial subspace, right? Because it's not in C. Well, C has the trivial subspace. So we have this. So what it means that, so W can be set only between zero and WN. So it can be set in between. But because W is a finite vectors, uh, finite uh, dimensional vector space, right? Then we can pick a basis, say dimension K, basis of W, where K is between N and one, okay? Now, we consider WK is the span of V1 to VK. So we're given W has dimension K, and we consider the corresponding WK. So they are having same amount of basis, right? So if if this WK, so if this WK in a chain, if this element in the chain, it is contained in W, this new element. So if we have this relation, then what well, we can say that because V1 and VK are linearly independent in WK because they're basis, then they're linearly independent in W, right? Because we have this. Now, the dimension of W is equal to K. And here we have K elements. So we know that K elements, K linear independent sets, is a basis of W. What it means is that, oh, it, you generates W, which means that this generates W. Well, what is this? By definition, is equal to WK. So WK is equal to W. But here's the contradiction. We assume that W is in D but not in C. But we get that you're equal to some element in C. Right? So we need, we can't have this. Then we assume D to be a chain. So if we can't have this, then we must have this. But similarly, if W is contained in WK, we also get a contradiction. Okay? Which means that D is not a chain. So we get a contradiction which means that we can't have W in D but not in C. So this is our proof. Now we keep on going. So we have a post set then as a maximal in X. If for any element in X such that if you're greater than or equal to X, then you're equal to X, okay? And the maximum element is that for any element, you have Y is less than or equal to M. Okay, so every finite post set has a maximal. Okay, this is left as, a, as an exercise. And let X be a non empty set. We say X, the post set, is well ordered if for any non empty subset of X, okay, for any non empty subset of X, it has a minimum element. Okay, or maximum, but that doesn't matter. But what order implies is totally ordered. Why? Because if it's well ordered, for any uh, non-empty subset, then we consider any two elements, any two two uh, two element sets, right? Then the, it has a minimum element, which means that we can compare A and B, right? We can compare A and B. Well, this really means that it is totally ordered, right? Because for any two elements, we can have a relation. Okay, so now let's just keep going. We want to show that the full. So here is the theorem that states that the following are equivalent. So the first one is the axiom of choice. It says that for any co non-empty collection of of each x lambda is non-empty. So for any collection of non-empty sets, non-empty collection of non-empty sets, we have this set is non-empty. Well, for those who don't remember what is this set, it is this. Okay, this is written like this 
and okay i'll talk about i'll talk about what is axiom of choice later let's just just finish this first and thorn's lemma says that okay we have a post set and suppose every chain has an upper bound then we have a maximal element okay if we have every chain has an upper bound then we have you have a maximal element and the second thing uh, the third is a well-ordering principle wo it says that for any non-empty set it emits a well-ordering okay so for any non-empty set that has a well-ordering so well-ordering is every non-empty set we can have a uh, we can have a relation such that it is well ordered okay for any it is well ordered yeah okay and the proof is going on my scope for now okay i might be able to prove it i mean i don't know when but not now and it's also not provided in the lecture notes so so here's the theorem is that any vector space has a basis over field f any vector space has a basis okay so the proof is that let omega be the set of all linear independent subset of v okay empty set is an omega right so omega is non-empty set because this is to be um, defined to be linearly independent now we have a well-ordering choice uh, well, I mean well-ordering principle because we are ordering by um, inclusion. Okay. So order by inclusion. So by well ordering principle, we can have a chain, right? So well ordering principle. Every non every set admits a well ordering, and well order means it is totally ordered. Totally ordered sets are just there's just chains, right? So which means that. Any non empty set, we can get a chain. We can, ex there exists a chain that is ordered by inclusion. Okay. Okay, so we get a chain and we let L denote the union of all of them. So if L is linearly independent, then L is an upper bound for C in here. Right, it is easily checked because the order we have is inclusion order. And we want to show that it's independent. So suppose for a contradiction that it is dependent. Now if each xj, right, each xj is an L, then you're in some you're, you're in some what? Lambda j for some lambda j in the index set. But C is a chain. Right? Since it's a chain, then we can have an element such that we have this right for any one to for k between n one right we have a maximal we have a maximal index such that it contains all the x k right and m is between one to n right we're chosen so we're a finite set now what with that being said we have this as a subset of l lambda m which means that lambda m is dependent Right, because this set is linearly dependent. It is a subset of this, which means that this is also dependent. We get a contradiction because you're in omega, right? So L is linearly independent. Now, as L is the upper bound for C and omega, it's by Zorn's lemma. Zorn's lemma states that every chain has an upper bound. If every chain has ever bound, then blah, 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 right? So here we're given a chain, which is choosing arbitrary chain, and it has an upper bound, which means that this omega here has a maximum element, right? We have a maximum m and omega. Now, suppose it does not generate v. Then we pick a non-zero y and v, but not in the spam, which gives that adjoining this y to m is a uh, strictly contained m and this set is linearly independent because y is not in the spam right it's linearly independent but m is the maximal element we get a contradiction because 
m is the maximum, but you have a bigger set that is also n omega. Which means that we should have spam as equal to v. And m is equal to omega n omega, so you're you span v and you're linear independent, then m is the basis of v. Okay, so this proves the theorem. Okay, so every vector space, even your infinite dimensional, you also get a vector space. So here let me just uh explain what is actually a uh, axiom of choice because I was really confused when I look at it uh first. Like what is this notation like? Like what are those? What do you mean by it is non empty? Like what are those collections? What are those functions? What are those lambdas? Like what are those? It's like overloading, right? So let's just settle down first. So let me get an explanation here. So to explain things, right? So and many times in mathematics, right, when we like we're using axiom of choice over and over again without explicitly explicitly saying that we're using it. So like sometimes in a proof you say that oh let S be non empty, then we can pick an X and S. So something like in our proof, we might write something like this. So if it's non-empty, then we can choose an element in S. This is really just axiom of choice. Okay, so why? Let's just look at the statement. This set, so let me just draw a diagram. Suppose each lambda, okay, look, um, so I suppose we're having like arbitrary many sets. So this is like x lambda one, x lambda two. For for simplicity, okay, because this index is supposed to be arbitrary, but this is just to let you, let you guys to understand why I'm doing. Okay. Five. Okay. Maybe maybe just maybe just four of them. Okay. Okay, so you have these two sets. And each of them, each of them are non-empty. Okay, each of them are non-empty. They're non-empty. Now we have this set is non-empty. This set is a collection of functions that maps from lambda. So let's just say lambda, let's just say the index set is one, two, three, four, for simplicity. Then we can erase the lambda sign, all right? So it's easier to explain. So x1, x2, x3, x4. You see what's going on, all right? Then this set is not empty, which means that there exists an f from 1, 2, 3, 4 to here, to here, such that we can pick an element. This is called f1. We can pick an element called this f2. We can pick an element f3, and we can pick an element f4. This mapping exists such that each of them is in a corresponding and like index indexed set. You see? So this is saying that we can choose an element from a set without construction. We can say, oh let's just pick an element from there. Right? So to explain this, we just let this to be equal to like, I don't know, one, right? Then those are all erased, right? That was one, then we have to just have one set, x1, right? Then by axiom choice, x1, say this x1, x1, by axiom choice, there exists an f from one, to from 1 to x1 
such that f1 is in x1. So, which means that we can pick an element. There exists a function. There exists a function from 1 to x1, which means that there exists an element in x1 such that this is equal to f1. So we can pick an element in x. We can just pick an element. Like this function exists. We can just pick an element in it. Okay? So to get more be more general, we just let this set to be an arbitrary index set. And we just like, you know. Okay, and so this is my understanding. And I hope you guys can understand a bit. Uh, okay, so that's it.